So ladies and gentlemen, today on Sports File, we're looking uh, at uh, the third consecutive Oakland A's World Series victory in 1974. This wraps up our three-part series about the A's. <clears throat> now, this 1974 season was unfortunately a, a year of transition for the, uh, the A's. A longtime manager, Dick Williams, who was really fed up the way Charlie Finley was running a team in the 1993 season, especially the Mike Andrews situation and the excessive uh, phone calls and manipulating of the, the lineup, he decided to uh, drop uh, from the team. Now, what was ironic this year, uh, Charlie Finley tried to sell the team actually for $15 million, which seems a pittance now, but 1974 it was big money, but it never came about. Now, uh, in, the, in the regular season, uh, they won the AL West again for the fourth straight uh, year, and uh, the big problem in Finley that year, of course, came in February when uh, uh, Reggie Jackson uh, won an arbitration case uh, in actually his last uh, two years in, um, in uh, Oakland. He, uh, he got a salary of 135000 for the season, nearly doubling his previous year, 70000 But uh, he was well worth the increase because, you know, he was a straw that stirred a drink. But the big controversy came on the 5th of uh, June where all feelers, uh, Billy North and Reggie Jackson, got into a fight at Tiger Stadium. Jackson injured his uh, shoulder, and uh, catcher Ray Fossey actually broke his neck trying to separate them, uh, and uh, which cost him three months on disabled list. And uh, <coughs> he was pretty well unavailable for the rest of the season. Now, the other country that year was the decision by Charlie Finley to uh, put track star Hurricane Hillary Washington as the team's first ever designated runner. He had no professional baseball experience uh, because he did play baseball in high school, but he was signed a major league contract that year and he debuted on April 4th. Um, and it was disastrous because he was picked off first base in a crucial night in situation by Dodgers reliever Mike Marshall. And throughout the season, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, Washington was picked off in Game 2 of the, the World Series by uh, Mike Marshall, uh, but he did have some problems with uh, the first base or judging it. Now, the A's uh, ended up with a 1972 record. Texas was a close second at 84 and 76. And uh, Oakland's biggest problem that year was actually uh, the AL East because they were 5-7 and seven against the Yankees, 4-8 and eight against Boston, 6-6 six and six against Baltimore. Uh, Cleveland only 7-5, Detroit 7-5. So they were uh, they were loaded with talent, but it was really a an off season, you know, with the team they had only 90 wins. Now the opening day starters were Bando, uh, Sal Bando, Vida Blue, Bert Campaneros, Reggie Jackson, Angel Melo Manguel, Billy North, Joe Rudy, Tennis, and Manny Trio. And because Trio, the the future Expo uh, ended up being, uh, you know, a, a, a nice addition to A's that year. They were, like I said, loaded with talent, but uh, uh, they had some of their teams had difficulty, like. Fossey was beset with injuries. He only hit 196 for the season. Uh, Tennis had his, uh, another great year, but only hit 211. Rudy uh, drove in 99 runs with uh, 22 homers, hit 293. And Bando had his regular 90 to 100 RBI year with 22 homers and 103 uh, uh, RBIs. But Jackson kind of had an off year. He only had 146 hits, missed uh, quite a number of games with 29 homers and uh, 93 uh, RBIs. Now for the uh, the pitching staff, again, uh, Catfish Hunter had a great year, 25 uh, wins, 12 losses. Blue was 17 and 15, and Holtzman had a very strange season. He lost 17 games, but uh, he only had 3.07 uh, ERA. But his strikeouts were down. Ended up with a 1917 record, and um, Glenn Abbott had a mediocre year as the fourth starter with a 5 and 7 record, and. Um, Blue Moon Odom, who was a great part of the, uh, the starting staff, had a very, very disastrous year, 1-5. and five. Now, Roly Fingers was the big reliever again uh, for uh, Oakland with 70, uh, 76 uh, games, 95 record and 18 uh, saves. Paul Lindblatt and Daryl Knowles got the, the rest of the work. But uh, it was, you know, a kind of a mediocre season on the pitching as well. Now, in the ALCS, the... Uh, went on to play uh, Baltimore yet again. They lost uh, game one, 6-3 in Oakland, but by, by, by game two, they won 5 nothing. 
the shutout of Baltimore won that thing in the third game and wrapped it up with a two uh, one victory in Memorial Stadium in game uh, four. So uh, the playoffs were going as expected. But uh, the big thing that year, of course, was uh, the Dodgers. Now, the LA Dodgers were the other great California team of 1974, and he had some really, really talented players. Ron Say, Yeager, uh, Bill Russell, uh, great outfielders, great pitching, uh, you know, Don, uh, Don Sutton, uh, Joe Ferguson. He had a really talented lineup. Steve Garvey at fourth, of course, David Lopes at second. Uh, you know, a great talented team. And them uh, facing Oakland in the World Series was kind of an early indication of the Dodger dynasty. And I say it's a dynasty, and, and bear with me for a second. They made uh, the World Series in 77 and 78 against New York, loss, unfortunately, but won the World Series against the, uh, against the Yankees in 81. Now, that was four World Series appearances in eight years, and I basically believe that is a dynasty because. There's no other way uh, you could uh, you could take it. Now, as for the the finals, Dodger Stadium had the first two games of the series, and Athletics in a very very uh, determined contest won three two in the opener, and uh, eventually in game two the Dodgers did rebound on the on the backs and the uh, the uh, the glove of Joe Ferguson, a good role player, role role playing catcher. By the time uh, game three came along. You know, we could see that Roly Fingers was uh, dominating the Dodgers in the late inning. There was a lot of base running uh, mistakes of all people like Bill Buckner and, uh, you know, the various uh, players for the Dodgers. They won 3-2 in Game 3, 5-2 in Game 4. And the fifth game, uh, the third game in Alameda, uh, the Athletics uh, outlasted the Dodgers 3-2. But you got to understand, I mean, uh, Alvin Dark uh, couldn't really give the team what Dick Williams needed. But, uh, you know, they had enough talent. They were pretty well playing for themselves that year. And, uh, but if you look at the old videos of the 74 Dodgers Athletic Series, it was almost a handing of the torch from the last great West Coast team to the next great West Coast team. But that year, get this, the Major League Baseball All-Star team, Campaneers, Jackson, Bando, Roly Fingers, Catfish Hunter, and Joe Rudy made the team. And I would pick those six players as a starter for any team in Major League Baseball history. What a great super six those teams were. Because Campaneros would get you 15, 20 homers. You know, a gritty player. Reggie was, a, was a, the straw, as we say. Bando was tremendous. Fingers was could go short or long relief. Catfish was just an overachiever. Had great success later on with the Yankees. And Joe Rudy, probably the archetype of the current 17, 70, uh, you know, 17 homers, 70 RBI uh, player we see now. Now, uh, we don't want to get it too deep of why this team fell apart. I really think Charlie Finley was was insane the way he ran the team into the ground because within two years, most of the players with the Dodgers were either moved on or tried to go to other teams. Bando was, ended up with Milwaukee. Rudy was gone. Uh, Jackson went to Baltimore. Catfish went to uh, you know uh, the Yankees. Fingers ended, ended up actually later on in Milwaukee than San Diego. We always wonder if the team of 73, 74, 72 was quite good, but 73, 74, that roster, if they would have kept together, they would have won six or seven World Series, maybe not consecutive, but can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if the athletics would have stayed together and the Expos would have hit a peak like a 1979 World Series with the A's at the Expos? People would never be talking about that. We talk about Vladimir Amir Guerrero and Bijou and Bichette, but the, uh, the, the Oakland A's had talent to burn, and they burned a the talent. Charlie Finley ruled the team. He did a Harold Ballard, a Steinbrenner, a Doug Ford, a Donald Trump, you know, egotism, uh, egotism you know, out of control. But uh, the cards, the baseball cards of, of the A's in those years, the beautiful green jerseys, the white jerseys, the gold jerseys, uh, what a tremendous memory. And for me, uh, car collecting cards and following the A's, from 72 to 75, every A's game was a delight. They look great, they played great, the mustaches, the perms. But in the words of Sal Bando, if would have, we would have kept together, no, nobody in the world could have bet us. He said maybe aliens from the planet Mars would have came down and would, <coughs> with nine arms and you know, be defeated us, but that's probably the only people. But uh, when Jackson ended up in Baltimore in 76, that was the straw that uh, broke the camel's back. 
instead of stirring it in Oakland. But uh, we'll talk about Mr. October later. That'll be a future podcast. The Mr. October years and with the Yankees and the Angels. And uh, he's a money player, and every team needs a money player. But, I mean, for me, Oakland is the second-best dynasty of all time. It's hard to beat the Yankees from the 20s and 30s with Gehrig and Ruth. But I think this team had a little bit of the old Yankees in them, and that's what he won. But uh, they weren't a jovial bunch. They would fight and, you know, you know, make problems for each other all the time. That happens on the best uh, best teams, anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Friday, New Brunswick, with a very, very interesting uh, weekend coming up. Because it's starting to feel like Easter, even Easter is two weeks uh, two weeks uh, before. And uh, just a shout out to all my baseball, uh, Rescue Mayor Baseball League family in the North Shore. Uh, from Dalhousie, Bearsford, uh, you know, Yilver Cross and Father Lang Tang passed away recently. Big loss for the baseball community. Tidehead, Attable, Camelton, Batters, you know, uh, even the membership of Adelaide. Man, you, you, all, all of us are products of that dynasty system of the Dodgers, Oakland, Yankees, because we saw victories in these uh, teams and you wanted to emulate it. And they were our teachers, weren't they, ladies and gentlemen? They taught us that baseball was religion uh, anyway so but if you ever meet any of the Oakland A's tell them Jeffrey says hi because I wouldn't be a journalist today especially a sports journalist were it not for the success I saw with Oakland I try to apply that to my own career so anyway hope this finds you well and like we say in the Burke Camp universe don't throw the bat at the pitcher because you will get suspended if you remember that incident in 72 anyway have a great day bye